Manek has always been an artistic person, but pursuing art only became an obvious choice when he failed his architecture exam in the most hilarious way possible. Failure only drove him forward, and today is an outstanding digital artist with extensive knowledge in design, storytelling, podcasting, and he has a killer sense of humor. So please join us today as we talk about why digital art might be a better choice for you, the difference between art and design, why Procreate is awesome for beginners, tips to add storytelling to your pieces, and why you're probably using reference images all wrong. (laughs) Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. Okay, before we dive into a bunch of questions I have about your art, can you tell us in a Mm. nutshell your path? Like, when did you first fall in love with art? Um, It was pretty early, I would say. I I think I started uh, just sketching things as soon as I could hold a pencil, just uh, doing the doing the whole like, you know, like when you draw around your palm thing, which takes mm-hmm. no talent, but you feel like you did something. Mm-hmm. So that that thing I got like, ev- everyone in my family was like, wow, you're such a great artist. And I, I think, you know, the <laughs> the encouragement at a young age of really bad art actually made me a good artist. <laughs> So it's just like over the years, I was like, I must be a genius because (laughs) everything I do, everyone's saying is so good. So then like I went with that confidence through school and I was like, everything I draw is just amazing, guys. I'm just going to draw this. I'm going to draw that. And it wasn't very good. But just people telling me that it was good just made me keep drawing. And then over time, I was like, ah, I think I know what they were doing. They were just being encouraging to some dumb kid. But it was helpful because through school, I would draw a lot. I would draw like uh, people's like pencil boxes and different boxes and things like that. They would always come with like Tom and Jerry different boxes or Dragon Ball Z pencil boxes. And I'd be like, you don't need this for now. Give it to me for 30 minutes. I'll be back. And I like copy all the <laughs> hair and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, over, over time, it just developed into something that uh, that people were not lying when they said it was good. They were just being, <laughs> they were being How did you know things. when they started being genuine about it? I mean, you got I older. Mean, I still so you don't kind of... know. I still Oh. I still don't know when people are, when people are like this is amazing I'm like is it really <laughs> They're like are you lying like my mama lied to me all this time <laughs> but it does <laughs> it does make sense though doesn't it when we're like t- tiny yeah. kids and we, we like doing yeah. something if we get encouraged and we truly like it we keep yeah. on practicing so eventually we will get better so it's yeah. it's yeah, even though it's a lie, in the long run, it made me like just do the thing again and again, even if it was just uh, under some illusion that I was good. But just doing the thing again and again, then, you know, fake it till you make it style made you actually good after some time. <laughs> yeah, it, it does make sense. And of course, we do not do that with adults because yeah. as adults, we are fully matured. We know exactly what we're yes. doing. This is all a lie. Well, I it's remember like, being a kid, I'm like, oh my yeah. God, that lady, <laughs> that grown up in her 30s. And I'm like, I'm in my 30s. Yeah. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> But as adults, we we know. Yeah. I mean, we should know just how to separate self worth from the things we're making. Like what yeah. we are creating yeah, is yeah. not what defines us as human beings. It's just what we're putting out there. Yes. Or it should be. It's hard, but but we have the capacity to learn that. And as kids, we we don't. Everything we do bad is because we were bad. It's it's really attached yeah. to our value as human beings. Yeah. And it's so easy to discourage a yeah. kid. My God, just thinking about it, my heart is like melting. <laughs> just like if I told to my son, like your footprints were terrible. <laughs> terrible kid. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, just, mama? No artistic talent with footprints. 
then he's not going to be a footprint painter when he grows up <laughs> there you go there you go so yeah. I, i i love the distinction between <laughs> between that okay so eventually you started being good at it and people started to go to you to do artsy stuff and how old were you then yeah yeah um maybe around 16 17 when I, mm-hmm. i was i was sort of i was sort of transitioning from uh i was, I was studying like sciences until then uh, india's education doesn't really have much arts before you turn 16 17 so uh informally i was just doing whatever art that i wanted to do but i but i was studying other things right and around then when i was going into college i was thinking you know i should um i should definitely do something related to drawing because this mm-hmm. has been such a big part of everything and i was like what is the thing related to drawing and i was like oh this is an obvious answer architecture right i should because because <laughs> i was like it is was the, the only same. thing i can think <laughs> I can't think of anything somebody would pay me for to draw that is not uh, architecture. Yeah, is like, is it is it is it that tied to because this is so fun of course no one's going to pay me to do something that is so fun what do you think that's yeah, related? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean not not really but I think at the time it almost felt like I want to draw therefore I will do architecture not like I want to draw therefore I will draw. Yeah. You know it it didn't seem as simple that you could just like do the thing. You it it felt like you needed to do the thing in the context of some other valuable thing. My god. It's the same here. Like you're in India, I'm in Portugal. Yeah. It's completely yeah, it's it's yeah. the same. I'm almost like you're going to be an architect. And I'm like but I have to make yeah. the line straight. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound right. I went into graphic design, but did you pursue architecture right. then? So um I went for a uh, an interview right uh, sorry not interview like a like a test you know they have these architecture okay. tests before you get into the architecture colleges and so I went there and I went for this uh, test and I was I was I was nailing all the drawing things I was just amazing at all the drawing stuff I was like you know the math stuff I'm just going to vibe it out but the drawing stuff <laughs> I'm going to go all out <laughs> just do it amazingly and make up for all the bad math stuff right but then there was this last question where the um where the um just examiner or somebody came in and they announced the topic that was supposed to draw right they announced it verbally and they said that you're supposed to draw road island right they said road island and in oh. my head this is some place in america or something like that and i was just like where is road island this is, i'm not, i'm not, this is, my geography is failing me about why firstly where is road island and secondly why would you want me to draw road island and thirdly i have no clue what road island looks like so i was like okay i got to make the most of the situation it's an island so i started drawing like a it's got to have a beach so i was like i started drawing this <laughs> beach with like coconut trees and like waves and some surfer dudes and some beach babes and all sorts of like fully rendered like whatever i thought road island looked like right and i submitted it and i came home and then uh, i was telling my parents that uh, you know this is a strange question i mean the exam went well but a strange question where they said uh, you should you should draw road island and i drew this this whole beach scene right obviously because who knows what road island looks like i just drew some beach and some waves and fully rendered water and all that and, and then my parents were like uh, actually manik road island is the island in the middle of the road you know the, like the circle that you go around while you're driving and i was like no this that's crazy because <laughs> Now I'm thinking with this will this do thoughts. One, I definitely don't deserve to be an architect, so I can't do that. And two, I feel bad for the person who is like correcting my paper who has to like look at this scene and wonder what on earth <laughs> this person was thinking when drawing a road island. Because I'm pretty sure you made someone's day. <laughs> It's I was just like this is no relation whatsoever so oh my god so yeah that this is why i did not do pursue architecture <laughs> because i did not pass the exams because i did not know what a road island is <laughs> i'm pretty sure so, there's I mean, this I guess... sorry just like i'm pretty sure there's this story going around 
probably worldwide at this point. Like, I have this yeah, friend who knows this teacher <laughs> that was evaluating this architecture <laughs> Yeah. And so, I mean, now whenever I'm driving around and I'm looking at Rhode Islands, I'm like, it, one day I'm going to see like a beach theme in the Rhode Island and I'll know that they stole it from, <laughs> from my... <laughs> I know that these architects are stealing my ideas. Oh my gosh. So anyway, so, so that's why I did not do architecture. <laughs> and I went straight into drawing. Uh, everyone was like, okay, man, you're really not going to be able to do anything else at this point. Why don't you just do drawing? If you're going to be drawing for architecture, why don't you just do drawing for drawing? But was and that so yeah, joined, you like, talking fine, to fine yourself? But so, so no, like uh, parents and like uh, people around oh. me. Everyone was everyone was uh, was thinking that. And you were yeah, like, oh, so why can't an really? Okay, so in, in yeah, I'm, yeah. How long ago was that? Because I remember when I had to make a choice for my professional career. Internet was not yeah. as easy to access as it is today, so it was harder to yes. understand what choices I had. Was that the same for you? Well, to some extent, India is uh, very rich with like uh, traditional art mm -hmm. you know so even though the modern concepts of illustration and design and stuff like that are fairly like basic here yeah, there's such a huge history of like traditional painting and sculpture and all that 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 is like pretty common mm -hmm. so i went into a college that was you know more geared towards traditional painting and sculpture right mm -hmm. so um it's not really the equivalent of like a design college or like an illustration thing that you might get. Um, but it's very focused on on the historical relevance in India and the uh, various techniques that people have used over here. Fine art. That yeah. sounds which which is which fun. Which was fine. Yeah. <laughs> and how that's long why they call was... it fine art because it's like just fine. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's not very good. It's just fine. <laughs> I am daring every single listener to go until the end of this interview and not crack up at something. It's like, we're trying to be serious and all of a sudden, whoop, that's why it's called fine art. Oh my God. Okay. So how long ago was that? And not that I'm trying this to get your maybe, age out on public, but. No, no. It was about 14, 15, 14, 15 years ago. 14 years ago. 14. Okay. We're about the same age, I think. Yeah. So fast forward mm. to now where you're most focused on digital yes. art. What was the transition there? Yes. Take yes. So that. the transition happened during college when I uh, discovered that the people that I looked up to all worked in digital mediums. Right. And so I bought myself a tablet and started mm -hmm. experimenting with it. And I realized that this is the this fits perfectly into my personality because I was like, I just cannot wash brushes, right? I cannot wash brushes. I cannot be bothered to mix paint. How can you run out of a color? It's such a ridiculous <laughs> problem to have. I'm like, guys, I mix this color. It's this perfect orange. And now I need more of it. Means I need to start from the beginning. This is crazy. I need to start with like yellow. and Oh my God. So for many reasons, Digital became like, I, I, this is just more practical for me. I, okay. I just cannot wash brushes. I cannot mix colors. If I want like little more space on the right, no. I just want it. You know? It's like, I, I need halfway it. Halfway just... through a painting. I just need a little bit more space. <laughs> you cannot and make more canvas. If it's canvas. You just can't. You just can't pull the canvas just an inch more. And so out of the convenience, out of laziness, I just was like, okay, this is going to be digital art for sure, because this is just mm -hmm. so much easier. And when I want orange, I can just take more orange. I don't even go to the shop to buy more orange. It so. does make sense. It, it, it works with <laughs> your kind of process. And I think it's, no, no, there's a lot of yes. value in what you just said. It's worth mentioning yeah. <laughs> that there are so many traditional art mediums. And again, it, just inside digital, there are so many softwares. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And 
I mean, if you had like the way you paint, the way you process information, if you had to do traditional, you probably wouldn't go as far because it was a bunch of friction between you and getting something done. And yeah, you exactly. saw that. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said like, yeah, it's, it's mostly just how it fits into your personality. Mm-hmm. Like for me, there was like, like a lot of people find like the process of traditional painting, like it helps their creativity. Like mm-hmm. the fact that you are using brushes and the fact that you are mixing paints and the fact that you are laying this down on a piece of paper, it helps, right? It it yeah. connects you more to the art. Whereas I was finding like there was just more and more of a barrier between me and like <laughs> what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Just like I was trying to think of be directly connected to the art and I, I was just like struggling with the in-betweens of it. So I was like, okay, let me just let me just replace this in between so that I can connect straight to the art. Yeah. yeah and I'm glad you brought that up because for me, I, I feel the happiest yeah. when I'm actually touching paint because I need yeah. that physical yeah. connection. And I, I like digital as well, but it's not as fulfilling for me as it is traditional. So yeah, I'm glad that we have yeah, the sure. two, the two things in here. Of okay, course, of course. So... Whichever, like the medium should obviously just help connect you to the, the piece, right? Like, that's that's why people end up like working I mean obviously there are artists who work in many different mediums but generally we tend to like gravitate towards a medium because we feel like that's the one that like doesn't hinder us Mm -hmm. like people will gravitate towards color pencil or people will gravitate towards charcoal or people will gravitate towards uh, watercolor because it, it just you just connect most to that process and you feel least hindered and you can you can just go for it uh and for me that was just digital things so that's how you just out. made it click for me why i like watercolor so much so watercolor is really hard to control it kind of has a life of its own and it's wild and anytime a friend of mine yeah. tries to make sense of a sentence that i try to put together they give up because i i'm just so weird right. so that's why watercolor and i are such great friends okay that's why watercolor <laughs> thank you you just uh you gave really meaning to my life monic thank you <sighs> okay Mm. You graduated, you were, so I'm sure you were doing all sorts of also traditional stuff while you were in college and experimenting everything. Yeah, yeah. Digital clicked for you. You yeah. started taking digital seriously. You graduated and then what up until now? So the many years in between uh, college and now were filled with just experiments mm-hmm. and and it continues to be so, Right. Like I find myself like pushing into like different uh, areas. I never really found like one specific place where I'm just like, oh, this is the thing that I do. And like, I just keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, What ended up happening is I think the first few uh, projects that I did were mascots. Um, Because back in the day, companies used to love mascots. Every yeah. company that started was like, you know, we need a mascot, yo. We need some artists to draw us a mascot. <laughs> and uh, like looking back, it's just like the most ridiculous thing because really nobody uses mascots anymore. <laughs> but back then, we were just like, we need some mascots <laughs> for our oh company to sell these sandwiches. Why will people buy these sandwiches if there's not a gorilla selling these sandwiches? My favorite mascots are chicken places that have a chicken as a mascot. And then you have the chicken <laughs> eating chicken. Yeah. And no one ever realized that's really wrong. But okay, moving forward yeah. from the mascot talk. Like, why would you? Like, they, they had paintings on the wall of a chicken eating. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Yeah, so so since mascots were a big thing, I got into character design almost unknowingly mm-hmm. <laughs> just because character design and mascots are so interrelated. And it's almost like it's a good way to practice it because it's not it's not like you can just make any character. You have to make a character that fits this thing. Right. So you are already thinking about like shape design. You are already thinking about color. You are already thinking about all these things that, you know, actual character designers mm-hmm. think about but you're thinking of it from a different lens and so that was the that was the initial uh, couple of projects and then i got quite into design as well as illustration so mm-hmm. i started doing a bunch of like uh user interface stuff i started doing a bunch of uh typography stuff i started like experimenting a lot with like letters and 
uh, how all this comes together. Um, so I ended up experimenting with a, with a lot of things. And as, as the years went forward, I, I started finding like, oh, I like doing this kind of illustration. I like, I like mixing uh, comedy into some horrific things. I like mixing a bunch of this stuff together right and um and people started commissioning that kind of stuff as well for for magazines for um album covers i've done a lot of like so i was also involved in music i was in a band for maybe seven eight years and so through that i ended up like just doing a lot of music related art as well so um, so yeah, I just went in a, so many different directions. And then over the past couple of years, I've just gotten heavily into storyboarding as well. It's almost mm-hmm. like practicing. <laughs> yeah. Storyboarding I... is very much like, uh, it's a very different thing because it's, it's, uh, it's obviously narrative becomes like the prime focus of it. It's mm-hmm. not really uh, making beautiful pieces of art, but like seeing all these different aspects, you know, seeing it from a lens of illustration, seeing it from a lens of narrative, seeing it from a lens of typography, seeing it from a lens of design, having all these like fully different perspectives. I started to see like a bigger picture here, like of what looks good, if you can say that, or what things make sense, you know, it didn't come to me from like one just illustration or something like that it came from many different places uh different pieces of the puzzle did you this is something that really intrigues me about everything you do not just your visual art i know you have a podcast in no new notification Mm. podcast i'll link uh, to it in the post associated (laughs) to this episode at etrelaw.com forward slash manic but you have you're you're one hell of a storyteller That's the first thing I need to say. You know how to tell a story. I mean, anyone listening to this interview has already probably realized that. And you bring that storytelling skill to your visual art and to your podcast. Uh, When I look at some of your art, like you have a full alphabet and a few numbers illustrated through Mm. character design and every single piece tells one story. It's not just someone posing as a C. It's a story there. And um, But I'm not saying this is like, you went to fine art, but you have graphic yeah. design concepts. You have storytelling concepts. Yeah. You have a bunch of, I mean, composition concepts. You get it from from college. But where did the rest of the knowledge come from? Was that things that you learned online by yourself? Or did you have graphic design in school as well? How did everything culminate into this right. powerhouse that is your skill set? <laughs> Um, so my brother, who's this is about four or five years older than to me, is a designer. Right? Ah. So he works in interface design. Right. And so I've sort of been exposed to this stuff even before I got into it. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that really uh, the skill set is one thing, but it's really just about whether that taste develops in you or not, and whether you have an interest in it or not. And so being exposed to like nice typography, being exposed to like just nice, uh, you know, uh, the ease of use of a uh, design, whether it's digital or whether it's physical, whether it's a tool or being interested in like, oh, how easy is it for somebody to use or how joyful does it Mm -hmm. make them to use this thing? You know, all of that discussion became very like common. Mm -hmm. Um, And so... Because that discussion was common, the interest in like reading about it became more. I started like researching more about like what designers were thinking about when they came up with things, whether they were, I mean, I know artists, um, there's, there's, I find like there's a very big difference between uh, art and design in the sense that with art, we are often like thinking about what we want to express right mm-hmm. and, and and it's it's coming from uh your person and you're just like giving it to the audience like that mm-hmm. right whereas in design it's very often not just what you want to do it is what is good for the thing exactly right so so you're not there's there's no real ego there it's it's mm-hmm. not at all about you it's not at all about your style it's not at all about which colors do you like or which fonts you like 
it's all of that doesn't matter like what matters is whether this thing is effective what matters is whether this thing brings somebody joy or brings somebody into the mood that you want uh and so these are just tools to to create that environment for the audience and so i started exactly. thinking a lot more on those lines rather than like what i want to express and what i like which wow. is my favorite color and all that like i still don't know what it's just like i have no clue which you palettes can pick i your, like your favorite which, because i like them all yeah, yeah it's like kids i mean i don't know i don't just have the one but i assume <laughs> And and it's true what you said. Um, it just reminded me when I was in college, one of the projects I had to yeah. make was the difference between art and design. And it was pretty much along the lines of what right. you said. Design fits a purpose. You have to communicate a message clearly and quickly through good visuals, yeah. while art is more about emotion and what you want the other person to feel when they see the piece and how you see the world. Yeah. So it's very, yeah. look, design is more logical in a sense, not that it's all about, you know, non-emotion. It depends, again, what the purpose is, yeah. while art is a little bit more yeah. personal. I mean, if you went to Ikea, yeah, Ikea is a huge labyrinth as is. Imagine <laughs> how you would on ever on earth get out of that place if the design about exits and shortcuts and where everything is yeah, where exactly. was not clear, yeah. you would be forever doomed in there. So yeah, design can save course. your life. Just uh, Ikea proves it. <laughs> that's that's the end of this part. And that's the end of the podcast. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <clears throat> Focusing on your art a little bit now. Yeah. So I know why digital. What is your favorite oh, sorry, digital? Sorry, do, do you like this? Is, this is the first piece of art that they're gonna see when they log on. <laughs> is, yeah, is my background. <laughs> if you're listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, yes. we highly encourage you to oh, go right. to our yeah. YouTube channel and see how Man Manek is being portrayed visually. Because uh, yes. 30 minutes before we met, he just realized he needed something <laughs> for his background that was not his home, and the result need, is yes. angelic. <laughs> Yeah, so I painted like a halo and wings <laughs> in the background, Golden. so that so that I can I can I can look angelic while talking. And, and I feel like everything I say is more trustworthy now. <laughs> you know, when you see it coming from like this very like angelic space, you're like, mm, it must be true. Everything that it says. Uh, see, design and art together, <laughs> manipulating emotion, yeah. and oh my god, we're making our jobs feel like a manipulative tool, but. Uh, <laughs> It's it's priceless. You have to you have to have a look, mm -hmm. even if it's just a frame. Just have a look at our YouTube <laughs> version. Links will be in the post associated with the podcast. What digital tool do you like the most? Oh, Software. I'm picking favorites now. Mm -hmm. uh, is I think it's got to be I think it's got to be Procreate on the iPad. Um, it it came into my life quite late, right? Uh, mm -hmm. because there was no appropriate when we started digital art but um just the it 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 was like one more layer of uh thing between me and the art taken away mm -hmm. like even though when i found digital uh it was great there was like photoshop and there's just so many things you could do in photoshop and because i have so many interests all of it sort of fit into Photoshop, you know, suddenly I want to do type design, suddenly I want to do this, it all kind of fits there, right, which is why uh, it was my uh, first love. But as time went on, I found that like the uh, ability for me to, you know, sit down, take out a, uh, a full tablet setup, start up a computer, set up Photoshop, have this huge interface in front of me, you know, set up things save things it felt like there was i mean i still do it for uh for uh slightly more in-depth uh things but for me to just start work for me to just not feel any barrier i feel is very important because this is, uh that's why i that's why I, I i use the ipad and procreate and I'm guessing it's uh, similar to a lot of artists where where you find the things that, like you try and make it easy for yourself to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, again, the process we'll go of back you to starting the is le less friction. Yeah, yeah exactly. The le the less friction there is, the more likely you will just keep doing nice things. We are doing a demo uh, on digital art in Procreate on May sixth. Yes, and. 
Can you just tell us a little bit about what you will be doing then? Sure. Um, you know, along along the uh, way of my art journey, mm -hmm. I realized that um, I, I love experimenting with narrative things, mm -hmm. you know, and part of that narrative, uh, actually, this happened when I was when I was doing my uh, comic. So I, I did this whole graphic novel, Bonneville, and all that, and it's a sli slightly a uh, horror-ish comic, mm -hmm. even though it's like funny and adventure and all of that. Of course, that. it has to have uh, funny stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, but it is at the base level a uh, mystery horror horror sort of story. And what I started doing is just to just to get some practice on um, narrative horror. I started putting monsters into photographs of of my friends and family so uh there were photographs that i found and i would just be like okay there, there's a photograph of my cousin sleeping on a bed but what if there was like actual monsters under the bed like reaching out and like is enveloping uh this person and so more and more i would just like look at uh photographs that people took of themselves and things like that and i was like yes but what if there what was is... <laughs> and, and and so the uh the interest started and it was always something narrative that came out of it it was always like you're changing what is going on story-wise it's not really mm -hmm. about like just the art of it it's um it is it is some storytelling essentially it's a very miniature storytelling and so i found that uh drawing on photographs was just a beautiful way of like practicing of course digital art but also practicing narrative and practicing a bunch of these things practicing lighting practicing so many things while just like having fun with the with the small little tool and so that's that's the that's the workshop that we'll be uh doing where we'll take some photographs and just have fun with drawing on them Oh, that will be so fun. So we will link to the photo that <laughs> Manek is going to use. But if you want to bring your own and try to do something yourself, that's totally fine as well. I know that you will be using as, as little tools as possible just to keep it simple for anyone starting with Procreate yeah. for the first time. And this is really fun. Yeah. Just, just like you said, we're studying lightning. I mean, you need to do um, a quick drawing not a quick drawing but a small drawing a monster or whatever you want to add to yeah. the story that looks like it's part of the picture of the photo that it's in so the light needs to match whatever yeah. environment the photo is having so that's, yeah it's, it's all it, it all of this like just forces you to like look more carefully at the photo where you're like, oh, why do these colors not work? Oh, because the environment doesn't seem to support these colors, you know, and you you see that difference right away where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you're using these colors, but it just doesn't feel like it's part of the scene because mm -hmm. the scene is not providing that kind of light or the scene is not providing that kind of atmosphere for this to look good, right? And so it's a, it's a great exercise uh, for me to just... Uh, just do something quick, but also think about all these things that, you know, help later when you're making your own full illustrations where you want to match the, the environment to your characters and stuff like that. Yeah, I love that. And I love, so I'm glad you brought that up because just looking at your Instagram and again, link will be in the post associated with this episode. I mean, we saw a few of those like monsters taking part of pictures with some uh, even yeah. though they're monsters and they look kind of scary in the whole thing just it's hilarious uh and then we have full <laughs> digital pieces i know sometimes you have like on your reels like a little bit of your process where you tweak and move things there's yeah. like this image queen gambit where you're talking about adding cat chaos without making it look cluttered so there's so much that goes in yeah. there and then you have this car series where you amazing yeah. I, I love that you, what you've done with the car series because you have your own digital take of the car and then you have if you slide right swipe right in instagram you see the actual yeah. photo that you you took as reference and yeah you talk about how you're practicing and correct me if i got something wrong but it looks to me that you're practicing how to use reference from a photo without copying everything. So can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? What is like interpret interpreting the reference, what to take, what to keep? And yeah, talk, tell us a little bit about that. So this a little bit ties back to like how I learned art because I learned art through copying, right? So uh, I used to copy all the different boxes and then most often like I would just copy it 
straight up like i would not think of what can i add to this or what can i change or what can enhance this i would just like because i was learning i was just like copying it as accurately as i could and over time you know as you get better at copying something there's a risk that you may just not be learning from it you 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 just sort of replicating the shapes and the lighting and i did that also for some time and i found that i just wasn't i felt like i wasn't absorbing enough from it like even though i was doing the work later on it was just not helping right the fact that i was doing these like photo studies was not helping so i was like okay let me let me also let me try a new approach where i slowly like copy copy photographs it's fine right this is without any pressure but at the same time see whether there are one or two elements that can change right while you're copying so like just intentionally make the car a slightly different shape or make the the colors slightly different and then what ends up happening is because you change that you end up having to change a few more things and a few more things right and mostly you get your cues from the reference right uh, but I, i've i've just always been amazed by like these artists uh and i, I know so many just great artists who use references and they like their art somewhat looks like the reference but it's just so widely different like i'm just like how did you use this as a reference right and they would have used like just the vibe of their pose you know just that is the reference just the vibe yeah. nothing is really actually taken from the uh, from the photograph and i was like okay so maybe i've been using references a little bit too strictly so far and i've wow. just been slowly trying to slowly trying to just pull away from still copying the photo but changing a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more whatever's comfortable right but intentionally pulling away slowly wow while copying wow that's huge uh, uh, i think advice. that 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 flexes some like creative muscles even though you are just copying you do mm-hmm. have to like think for yourself of okay i guess now the perspective is slightly different and therefore this shadow will be slightly different and therefore mm-hmm. it just those you know micro thoughts uh, end up like s- making the process of learning so much richer than just you know taking uh, doing a master study or something like that that you, where you're just straight copying yeah that does make a lot of sense and that's yeah. sound in rich advice so thank you for that we're close to wrapping up but before we go any tips that you'd like to share regarding art making that may or may not apply only to digital um so uh, very when i was very young i um I, i like i said people started saying that i was very good at art right yeah, i was a good genius at making the making the pictures that i was a genius etc which i still think <laughs> um but <laughs> but um i started noticing and i met a bunch of people who um who started saying that you know it, it's it's really like you're very good at at drawing but just make sure that it's always the idea that is driving you not the skill wow and and so from a young age i've just tried to because they were like you know there's there's always going to be um there's going to be tools that come out that make uh draftsmanship and rendering easier as you go on there's going to be like um this this is always people who are like amazing at rendering amazing at this amazing at that but really what makes something valuable uh, is is really the decision making or the the storytelling or the the idea of it right however it's rendered right there can yeah. be things that are rendered really basically and you somehow just really like them right and so I wanted to like get to the core of why do I like these things that are essentially just like stick figures and yet they are so compelling. So it's mm-hmm. clearly not just in the rendering and in the skill that that art seems to exist. It seems to exist in this like the core idea of it or the core storytelling of it. And so if if I had to give a piece of advice it would be um of course there's so many people who are uh, just amazing at art and rendering and just 
know everything. But what I think should be at the forefront of our minds is the idea behind it and the story that we are trying to convey. And the, even if it's a miniature story, it adds uh, such a emotional beat to it that would be missing if we just focused on rendering. What did you think of today's interview? Please let us know in the comments section of the post associated with this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash manic. That's E-T-C-H-R-L-A-B dot com forward slash M-A-N-E-K. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, simply let us know in the comment section below. If you're enjoying the podcast, please help us keep the show alive. You can subscribe and give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etcherlab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. Or if you're more of a YouTube viewer, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our most recent videos. Sharing is caring and every little bit helps. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Until then, let's make more art. Yes. If only my okay. name was like Rainbow Kitty or something. It's so much easier right. to pronounce than Manic. <laughs> <laughs>